Are you ready to go? I'm ready. The, the, uh, we're have, we've been having some technical problems here, but uh, we'll, we'll muddle through them. Um, why, why do we, you know, first of all, why study this? Why try and learn about this? Well, uh, we are here in the Western world, and this image here is a painting by an Italian painter named Raphael. Um, uh, represents the, the classical world, the best of the classical minds. It's called the School of Athens. Uh, it's Plato's Academy. You've all heard of Plato, I presume. Yes, okay, played a great thinker. Once, once said of him that, that everything else that we know is just a footnote to Plato. But, um, and that's Plato there on the left, in the, in the center, and his student Aristotle. And they had disagreements about, about life and the way world, the world worked. Uh, just as you should disagree with your teacher, better for that tomorrow, Steve. And, uh, um, there are a lot of other figures here. Pythagoras is down there on the left, uh, sketching in his, in his book there. And this fellow holding the globe over here is Strabo, the famous geographer. Uh, Diogenes is, the, is the, the fellow here, looks all worn out, sitting on the steps. He was the guy roaming the world looking for an honest man. I think he probably just came back from Congress. Uh, he's so worn out. But uh, in any event, um, uh, if you'll, uh, this, as I said, represents the, 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 the cream of, of Greek classical thought and wisdom. Uh, next slide, please. But leaning over Pythagoras' shoulder there is, look at this guy here. Who the heck is that? Vaguely oriental, vaguely Middle Eastern, turban, mustachioed guy. In, in the midst of all these people wearing togas and doing great things and holding grapes and, and thinking great thoughts, uh, well, he was a fellow by the name of Ibn Rushd, and he was a medieval philosopher, Muslim, uh, wrote quite a bit about Aristotle, commented quite a bit about Aristotle, was a doctor, was a lot of different things. Um, and he's included in this portrait. Raphael, when he painted this, recognized that Western thought owed a, a debt to this guy in the bush, as well as to the whole Muslim world. It wasn't just, it, it represents the contribution here of Islamic thought in the development of Western thought. Um, next slide, please. Well, where do these people come from? They came from the Arabian Peninsula, of course. Islam came from the Arabian Peninsula, which is down here on the, on the, on the bottom. Uh, where you see the, the meter there. Um, and it emerged into a world that was divided between the Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, and the Sasanian Empire, which today is what? Anybody know? Anybody? No? Persia, Iran. This is Iran today. Um, and, and Iraq, up here, see the Euphrates and the Tigris. And, um, so, uh, at, at this point in time, Islam emerged into this world where these two powers had been fighting for centuries, and they were just pooped. They fought each other for centuries, and they just couldn't do it anymore. They were weak. And that is why Islam, one of the reasons, it was able to succeed militarily, because these powers were just born out. And uh, uh, the the Sasanians succumbed rather quickly to the advance of, uh, of Islam. Um, and the Western power, uh, next slide please, uh, which was based in Constantinople, the walls of which are still, still standing after so many years, um, actually survived until 1453. Um, well, we're going to talk a little bit more about what, what happened in this part of the world, uh, and we'll get back to this map in, in a minute. Um, but on this ne next slide, please. As I say, Islam emerged, came up militarily, spread the, the word of Islam, and as they moved uh, north, could you go to the next slide? As they moved north, they encountered some people who 
we're coming down from, see where Armenia is up there? There's a city there called Edessa. If you look right below the A of Armenia, you're straight down in Edessa. So there was a group of Christians there. They were called the Nestorians. Um, they were Christians who uh, had kind of, uh, you know, Christianity at this time uh, was still trying to figure itself out, still, still arguing a lot about, about what was the true nature of Christ and, and, and what's the right Christianity to follow. And, uh, and the Nestorians kind of invested in the, um, I want to know, sort of the A-track version of Christianity, if you will. They lost out, you know. The, uh, uh, so they um, were, but they did have there, uh, next, next slide, please. They did have a famous uh, school. This is an old picture of Edessa. Um, uh, they had a famous uh, school there where they translated and kept a lot of this Greek classical wisdom. Um, next slide. Now, they were run out of town by this guy, Justinian, who was the Eastern Roman Emperor, Byzantine Emperor. Um, and the reason that he ran them out of town, he was a guy who was used to getting his way. Uh, next slide, please. You can observe that by this little detail, a little subtle detail in this mosaic. Oh, he's stepping on this guy's foot. So he's not only a bad dancer, but he's a very powerful man, a guy who's used to, used to pushing other people around. Uh, he wanted to rid the empire of all things that were associated with the pagan past. And that meant Greek learning. So he closed down Plato's Academy, um, and uh, he forced a lot of those people that were cultivating this knowledge, forced them out of the empire. So, uh, next slide, please. So these Nestorians got kicked out, and they started heading south, and they ended up uh, in Yundashapur, which is right there next to the E in the Sasanian Empire. And the reason they ended up there was because, the, you know, they, this was still Persian at the time, and the Persians would, you know, took every opportunity they could to thumb their noses at the Romans, and they'd be happy to welcome these people that the Romans were kicking out. So, um, next slide. 